Hi everyone. When I thought about doing this, uh, my goal was to share some of what I had learned about generative art, blockchain, and uh, NFTs and exactly what some of these things were. I had heard about all these things, but I never really understood each one individually. And at this point, I'm not an expert in any of these areas. In fact, my hope is to connect you to some of the experts that can really tell you what's going on. What I can offer is what I do understand about the entire process of what I've learned from jumping in feet first and just getting started. And so my hope is to guide you on how to get started by, by giving you some of, the, some of the first steps to take. So get you started with a crypto wallet, send you an NFT, and understand some of the ideas of the blockchain in a very practical way. Today I'll also share some about generative art and what exactly makes it so special in the context of the special NFT that uh, I've sent a number of you. You've all hopefully made it to this website here. This is the Kukai wallet. You can access it at this URL. Uh, your wallet is essentially your login for everything that is blockchain. And so pairing your wallet is the essential first step for any site that you want to use on the on the blockchain. And so this is why it's so important not to lose access to your wallet because if you can't get into your wallet, if you lose your login to the wallet, you're obviously not going to get anything that's in that wallet back ever again. There's no recovery because it's it's all built into the system. I've asked you to send me your wallet address. Now you can get that wallet address uh, up here. You can hit copy and it'll copy it to the clipboard. You can see it's this uh, long string of letters there. And this is not private. This is actually what you use, what you need to give somebody if you want someone to send you an NFT or uh, send you funds. Like this wallet address is the key to all of that. So when I ask you to send that to me, it's not like some secret. You're sending me that address so that we can interact with each other on the blockchain. Now, for those of you who have sent me your wallet address already, these are the next steps. So I get your wallet address, and this is my, my generative art front page, and I hit this button to mint an iteration of my program. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to try that again. So I'll hit this button. Okay, and so now that I have uh, initiated a contract call, I have to go to my wallet and I have to approve this operation, confirm that I really want this to happen. So uh, I go over here, I confirm that. I have to log into my Google account every time there's a transaction that just makes sure that I really mean it. Okay, and so now we're just waiting for confirmation. These have talked to each other and uh, we're just waiting. Now you can see that this initiates a transaction from my wallet to the wallet address of a program on the blockchain. This is the address of that program on the blockchain um, that's running. And this program is called a contract. There are lots of kinds of transactions that happen. Uh, some are transfers of funds. Some are to pay fees. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Um, others run a contract. And all of these transactions together are chained together in a very specific way, and they're grouped in a block, and that's where the name blockchain comes from. There's a lot more than that uh, to it, but that's the basic idea. And so this contract runs a program that I wrote to generate, uh, generate that art, and it creates a token that represents that art. And so that, that token is now right here in my wallet. Um, but I now have this token, and so what I can now do is I can send this token, which represents the result of running that program on the blockchain, I can send that to another wallet address. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to send this to another address. I'm going to send one token, because there is only one token that I generated. I'm going to paste that in, and it costs a little bit to actually do this transaction, to store the transaction on the blockchain, and also there's a cost to, to send. That's kind of how this whole system works. I'm going to confirm that that's what I want to do. And I again have to sign in to Google to make sure that I approve that this is happening. And so we should see in just a moment, one of these is going to disappear. You can see down here that uh, I've sent this to this other address, that address I paste it in, but it's unconfirmed. It takes, a, it takes some time for this to be registered on the blockchain and recorded. Once it's recorded though, that token is no longer going to be shown in my wallet. There we go. It is confirmed and you see that that token is no longer in my wallet. It belongs to this other person now. It is in their wallet and it's no longer mine. Uh, so a couple things about what's going on here. 
This was that transaction where uh, I spent 1.1 Tez, which is the cryptocurrency that we're using on this blockchain. Um, and so that cost me that cryptocurrency. I got some of it back because I'm also the owner of this contract here on the website. And so uh, whenever there is one of these that is sold, I get uh, this amount, this 1.045 Tez, as, as the creator of that contact. So I get some of that back, and then this shows that transaction of that token being sent to the other person. And so the end result of all of this is uh, all of you <laughs> hopefully having your own copy of this. And so you can, you can see that there are uh, a bunch of these results now on the website. Um, each one is unique because uh, each time I, you mint a token, it's going to result in a different piece of art. Now, I am not manually creating each of these pieces of art. They're all being generated by a program that I wrote. That's where my creativity is. That program is running as a result of the contract that was running on the blockchain. And so you send a request to the blockchain that's called minting uh, the NFT. Uh, it runs a program and generates the, the result of that program essentially represented by the token that's in your wallet. And then that can be sent to another person. It can be traded. That's the way that it works. Uh, if you do the math, there are two to the power of 315 ways that the blocks in each tower can actually be arranged in the stack. Uh, they are either there or they're not. And in my program, I randomly determine whether a block is going to be in the stack or not. And it actually decreases in probability as you go up, which is why most of these have pretty solid bases down here. But as you go up, it starts to uh, get a bit sparse in terms of the blocks that are on the stack. So two to the 315 ways the blocks can be in there. There are five factorial ways that the colors can be arranged in this stack. Um, actually, I think it's five times four times three, so it's not five factorial. Uh, that's a lot. And so if you multiply those together, it's an absurd number of ways uh, that you can generate this art. And it is exceedingly unlikely that this exact piece of art, or this one, or this one, or this one, will ever be randomly generated again. Even though my program can be run many, many times, it's so unlikely that this is ever going to happen again. What's unique about this website, um, when you load your individual NFT, the same program that generated the NFT in the first place runs, and it uses a special seed value. That is, uh, the seed value is used in the random number generation step, and that seed is generated from the location on the blockchain. And so every time the program runs off the blockchain, with that information, it will make the exact same art. And so this is where the ownership part is really, really exciting, because uh, suppose someone wants to verify that you are the owner of this particular NFT. All they have to do is they have to trace your wallet address, run the program by loading the page, and see that you get the same result. Um, anybody could download just a screenshot. There's always this talk about NFTs aren't really special. You can just save the image and then you have it. But what's unique about this is uh, the program that generates the art is effectively locked to the owner of the token. And so whoever owns the token holds the key to generating that art the same way every single time. And it's really special. I'm gonna leave that there for now. Um, if you haven't sent me your wallet address, please do. If you're, if you're in our program, I'll send you, uh, send you your own version of the, the tower stack. If you're just watching for fun and wanna to contribute to this project, go ahead and uh, mint your own iteration of the project and that'll help me support other uh, educators and, and down the line, hopefully students who wanna be part of this project. Have fun, thanks for watching.